Hey everyone, this is Arya, and I wanted to release a new simulation tutorial this week, but I've just been finding myself a little bit busy lately as I'm expanding my brand, and I went to render my animation and realized that I forgot to set my camera focus. There were a couple of other things I want to change about it as well, so I decided to just hold off for now until it was completely done. As well, I've been spending my time connecting with a lot of really amazing artists outside of YouTube. And the really cool thing is some of you actually have seen my work before, so it's really exciting to be able to chat with you. I'm also working hard on creating sound effects for my Patreon channel. I often get a lot of questions on my tutorials about specific issues that people are having, and unfortunately I'm not always able to respond in full detail to those. I thought this might be a good opportunity to start another series of tutorials to the channel that focus more on common issues that people have when they're dealing with the different types of simulations. And since I was already working with cloth this week, I figured I'd start there. I do plan to create this type of tutorial for each of the types of simulations. By the way, if you do want to get those sound effects that I was talking about, or if you're interested in getting all the blend files that you see on the channel, just head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. Okay, so let's open up a brand new scene. Then we can just hit A to select everything and hit delete. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the character that I'm going to use just so that we're all on the same page. So make sure to download that, then once you've got that you can go to File, Import, and select this option here. You just want to find on your computer where that file is and select Import. I'm just going to hit the decimal key on the numpad just to zoom in a little bit closer. So now that we've got our base character here, what we can do is just hit Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. G and Z to bring this up above our character. I'm just going to scale this down a bit just so that it doesn't completely cover our character. So hit N on the keyboard just to bring up your transform settings, and then I'm going to scale this down to something like 0.8. Because we're doing a simulation, let's just hit Control A and select Scale. And you'll see that our scale is reset. Now that we've got that, we can head over to the Physics Properties on the right and select Cloth. You'll see that our cloth kind of disappears. Our pivot point is still here, but if we zoom out, you'll see our cloth is way down here at the bottom. And the reason why is because we're on frame 44, so let's just head back to frame 1. The next thing we want to do is add a collision object for our cloth to collide with, so let's select our character and click collision in the physics properties. Let's just leave this to default for now. If I hit play, you'll see that our plane sort of just crashes in and sort of just glitches into our character, and of course the reason is we haven't added any subdivisions to our plane yet, so let's select the plane, hit tab to go into edit mode, and you'll see that we've only got four vertices and one face. So right click and let's click subdivide. Just head down to the bottom left and we'll just open up this menu here and set the number of cuts to 25. Now if I hit tab to go back into object mode and hit play, you'll see that it is working a little bit better, but obviously we're still having a lot of problems with our mesh. So we do need to add some more subdivisions for sure. Back into edit mode, let's right click and subdivide one more time. Tab to go back into object mode and then we'll just hit play. And now you'll see that it is starting to look a little bit better, but there's still some problems here. So the next thing that we should do is add some self collisions to our cloth. So again, back to frame one, then just head back into the cloth physics. And if you head all the way down to the bottom, you'll see an option for collisions. So let's open that up. Here is where we can select self collisions. So let's turn that on. Hit play and you'll see that a couple things happen. First of all, it gets a lot slower, especially when it starts to collide with itself. But it is starting to look a little bit better when it's colliding with itself. So back to frame 1. We can hit tab to go back into edit mode. And if you have a slower computer, just be careful with this. Make sure that you're saving. And once we subdivide this, I'm going to show you a preview of it. But if you have a slower computer, I suggest just waiting till the next step instead of previewing it. So right click and subdivide. Tab to go back into object mode, and if I hit play, you'll see right away that this is slower than one frame per second, so this is super slow, so if I was to continue to let this play, you'll see that as soon as it starts colliding with our object, everything sort of breaks down and falls apart. So at this point, adding more subdivisions is not helping, it's actually making things worse, so we need to take a new approach, and sometimes in Blender, depending on which type of simulation you're using, 
the size of the simulation will affect whether or not it's working correctly. So one more time, if I was to hit play, you'll see that it's going at about half a frame per second at this point. So one thing we can do is just hit A to select everything, or you can just click and drag. And by simply scaling up our entire animation by hitting S and typing in 3, you can see now that if I hit play, things are moving a lot quicker. So it's moving about 4 or 5 times as quick. We can shade this smooth so that it's looking a lot better. And if I was to just let this keep playing, you'll see that now things are starting to look really nice. So our cloth is really grabbing onto our character. And you'll even start to see that our fingers are poking through. Once we're finished the simulation as well, we can also add a subdivision surface, which again will also make this look even better. But you'll see that there are still some issues that we're having here, so there's a couple more things we can do. And now that we've got roughly about the size we want and the proper subdivisions, we can finally head into the physics properties and start changing some of the quality steps. So just keep that in mind when you're doing any simulation, the best thing to do is start with the basics and work your way up. If you go too high, you might get something nice, but it could be extremely slow, which is going to end up costing you time in the long run. I'm going to set my quality steps to something like 10. Then just scroll all the way down to the collision settings as well, and I'm going to set this to 10 also. Again, make sure that you're always saving. And then if I was to hit play again, you'll see that it's still moving pretty quickly. It's going at almost 2 frames per second. And now you're really starting to see that things are looking a lot better. Again, once we add subdivisions, things will start to look really nice. And now we've got some really nice folds. And everything on our character is looking really good. Nothing is poking through. If I just quickly go into pose mode and select these joints, again, you don't have to do this. I just want to show you this a little bit better. So I'm just going to quickly rotate these just so that the hand is facing upward. Then hit play one more time, and we can see how it turns out. If I just let this play through a bit, you'll see that even with our fingers poking out, we still have good collisions. Even if I add some subdivisions, you'll see that everything is looking really nice. If you weren't able to do this many subdivisions, but you followed all the other steps, and you're having some issues with your geometry poking through, Another thing that you can do is select your collision mesh, head into the physics properties, and you can change your thickness to something a little higher than this, like say 0.03, which will just give you a little bit of a larger border around your mesh. And one thing to note that if you do have a simulation this size, sometimes it feels like the cloth is moving slow, so you can also change the speed to compensate for how large this is. At this point is when I would go back into the cloth settings and start changing anything that I wanted. I'm happy with this simulation here, so I'm just going to head back into the cloth settings, head down to the cache, and hit bake. Awesome, so that took less than 5 minutes for me to bake this entire simulation, and if I let it play through, you can see that it looks really good. I don't have any friction on my object just because I like the way that it falls along the character. But again, if you want it to stick to your character, then just make sure to add some friction. And you'll see that even around the fingers, things are looking really nice, and our cloth is flowing really well. Make sure to like and subscribe as well. If you're able to support me with a donation, just head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. I'll see you soon. Bye!